Hello builders, I'm Matt from Build That Website. And today I'm gonna to show you how to add buttons to your WordPress menu. Now I got two different styles for you and then we're gonna add some icons and maybe some cool hover animations just to round things out. Now, if you're new here, I would love it if you subscribe to the channel, we'd be thrilled to have you and we have some great stuff coming up. Timestamps are down in the video description and let's get started. So first we need to add the link to the menu that we wanna turn into a button. So to do that, we're gonna to go to the dashboard and we'll go to appearance and then menus. The type of menu item that you're gonna add might depend on whether you're linking to an internal page or an external resource, uh, but we're just gonna use the custom link in this example, but you could use pages or posts just the same if you want. So I'm just gonna make it a link to YouTube and we'll pretend that's the link to my YouTube channel. And we could just say subscribe as the link text. Now we're gonna add that to the menu. And of course you're gonna position it where you want it. I want it at the end of my menu, so this is a good position. Now the next step is we need to add a CSS class. And I've already enabled this option, but you may not have this option available. Um, so if you don't see it, you're gonna go up here to the top and go to screen options. And you wanna make sure that the CSS classes menu property is enabled. Now you'll be able to come back to your menu item here and we're gonna add a CSS class. And you can name it whatever you want. I like to use something descriptive, but I'm just gonna go with menu button. Now we'll save the menu. And one more trick while you're here in the screen options, uh, if you wanna be able to set a no follow attribute for your button, you would wanna select this so that that lets you set a link rel and also enable the link target. This will allow you to open it in another window if you want. And now when we go to our button settings here, you can see we have the option to open in a new tab and you could also set the link relationship. So for example, you could put no follow or sponsored in this box and that will apply that attribute on the front end. Now back on the front end of the site, you can see our menu item that we created and it doesn't look any different than the menu items that we had previously, so we need to style it. And to find the CSS class that we added, we can just right click. And in most browsers, you'll have an option to inspect. This is uh, in Chrome. And if we see the structure of our menu item here, it's a list item and it's added the custom class name that we put in there. So I use menu button, so here's the class. So we're gonna write a rule for the A element that is inside the class menu button. Now, if you've never written CSS code before, you might be wondering where in your theme or where on your site you should put it. Because your menu is gonna be on every page of your site, it's a good idea to put it in a style sheet that will be loaded on every page of your site. So you have a couple options. One uh, is built into the WordPress customizer now. We have, if you scroll to the bottom, we have this additional CSS option, and you can just put all your CSS code here. And this is a great place to put it if you don't already have somewhere else that you like to put your CSS code. Otherwise, some people have a separate plugin. For example, I have custom CSS Pro installed on the site. One more good option is if you have a child theme installed on your site and you go to appearance and then theme editor, in your theme files here, you can edit your style sheet, your style.css file that comes with your theme, and that's a good place to put site-wide styles. Now, before we can write our CSS rules, we have to inspect the structure of the HTML code to make sure we target our rules properly. So if we inspect here, so we're gonna be targeting this link inside this menu item, which is class menu button, but it's also important to target these styles specifically to our menu to make sure we don't accidentally create buttons elsewhere on our site, maybe if something had the same class. So if you aren't certain that you've used a unique class here, it's a good idea to target the wrapper class of your navigation and it's gonna be different depending on what theme you use, but I'm gonna show you how to find it. So if you expand the structure of your menu and you can hover over any of these elements and it will sort of highlight it, highlight it on the screen so it can see um, what container you're currently selecting. But for example, if I go to this, this is the outer wrapper of my menu and it's div ID primary menu or class main nav. So you may wanna consider putting one of these selectors in front of all your rules that you're writing for the button, just to make it more targeted. And if you're gonna use the ID of your element, you would put the hashtag and then primary menu. That's how you select an ID. And if you're gonna use the class, so if I wanted to target it, the class at main nav, then we would put a period instead of a hashtag and then write our rules. All right, so first off, we're gonna create the ghost button style. And again, we're gonna be targeting the A element, the link element inside this list item that has the class of menu button. So to show you how I would select it with the, the menu ID on my own site, I would write a rule primary menu. So we'll say primary menu, which is containing the class menu button, which is containing an A element or a link element. 
and we can start writing our rules. So for this example, I'm gonna use um, a red border color for my ghost button. So we're just gonna say border, three pixels, solid, red. And you can see it's been created. Now, you might notice that the box is a little bit disproportional. I think it's too tall. And this may or may not happen on your site. This is specific to my theme. But if we just click on this element and sort of inspect on what's happening, you can see that our button is 60 pixels tall. But if you notice, there's no padding on this element. And what's actually happening is if we scroll down here, um, the theme is actually setting a line height of 60 pixels. And so it's forcing the button to be 60 pixels tall. So I wanna undo that so I can control the sizing with padding myself. So we're gonna write a rule, line height initial. And that will just unset the line height so it will go back to sort of the default line height that is set by your browser. Now for the next rule, I'm gonna match the font color to the border color. So we'll just say color red, and that sets the text color. And now we need to set some padding to make the button the size that we want. So let's try padding. And when writing padding rules, you can set the top left, right, and bottom padding separately. For example, you could go padding top 10 pixels, and that would just affect the top. But there's also a padding shorthand where you can set multiple padding values at once. And the order that it goes is it goes top, right, bottom, left. If you set four values, or if you only set two values, it goes top and bottom, side to side. So we could do, for example, 10 pixels of padding on the top and bottom, and 20 pixels of padding on the left and right. So that looks pretty good to me. And then we'll add a border radius just to make it a little bit of a rounded button. So we'll say border radius five pixels. And I want it to stick out a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna make the font size slightly bigger than the default. So I'm gonna make it font size 19 pixels. So as you can see, we have the basic structure of a ghost button or an outline button already set up. But if you hover it, you'll see that we don't actually have a very pleasing hover effect. And I wanna change this color so it looks a a little bit more coordinated on hover. So let's set a hover state. So we're gonna write another rule for the hover state of the button, and we're gonna use the same uh, container selector that we used before, and again, it will depend on your theme. And we're gonna target the menu button class again, and I'm gonna target the hover state of this element. So you put the colon hover after the A. Let's just try uh, changing the font color to white on hover. And we're gonna change the background color to red to fill in the button when it's hovered. And now if we hover it over it, you can see it does that. So I think that looks pretty good, um, but there's no animation between the states. So I tend to like a little bit of a animation transition between the states. And it's super easy to add this with CSS. Um, and you can just write a rule transition and then we'll apply it to all the properties. So anything that changes between the hover and non-hover states will be animated. So we'll say all, and we'll make the transition last uh, a quarter of a second or 0.25 seconds. And now if we hover over it, there's just this slight animated transition. All right, that's it, our button is completely done. So let's move on to the solid button. And I'm gonna show you how you can add uh, an icon or an emoji to your button as well. So turning our ghost button or our outline button to a solid button is super easy. I'm just gonna delete this rule where you set the border. I'm gonna keep the line height rule. I'm gonna change the font color to white. I'm going to add a background color of red to the button. And now the initial state of the button is basically complete. And next up, we're gonna adjust the hover state because right now the hover state is exactly the same uh, as the base state of the button. So instead, maybe we wanna add a couple different rules. The first thing I'm gonna do is slightly darken the background so you can see that it's being hovered. So I've got a style that is slightly darker than red that we're just gonna paste in here. And this is a hex code color that you can just get from a color picker in your browser. And now when you hover, the button slightly darkens. And we could also enlarge the button on hover. So we could say, for example, transform, scale the button. And we're just gonna put in parentheses 1.04, which will make the button 4% bigger on hover. And now if you go like that, the whole thing enlarges. And as you can see, it's animating between the hover and non-hover state by using the transition property that we set already. All right, now let's talk about a couple tweaks you could make to level up your buttons. Um, one is you could add a gradient background to the button and maybe change the gradient on hover. And the next is you could add some sort of icon or Unicode character or emoji to the button just to make it a little more visually distinct and clickable. So first let's add a background and 
for my rule, I'm just gonna use the same, um, I'm gonna combine the red that I was using for the background and the hover state, the darker color, and I'm gonna combine them in one rule. So I'm gonna put in a linear gradient, which basically goes in a straight line and it's angled at 120 degrees, which is about like that, sort of diagonally. And you could rotate it so you can make it top to bottom of the button, 180 degrees, or left to right, which would be 90 degrees. Um, but I'm gonna keep it at 120 degrees. And basically it just shifts gradually from the color red at the far left side to this darker color sort of down in the bottom right. So we can put another rule and I'm just gonna make the button red on hover, um, but we actually have to use a linear gradient to do that. So I'm gonna make the gradient red to red. And now on hover, the button just becomes solid red. So that's one option you can do. And then to add an icon or an emoji, there's a couple ways you could do it. For example, you could paste a Unicode character directly inside the WordPress menu dashboard, but I prefer to do it through a pseudo element so I get a bit more control over the sizing and the spacing of my icon. So let's create a pseudo element. And to do that, we're just gonna go use our same selectors as before, which for me is primary menu, and then menu button, which is the class I created. And we're gonna create a pseudo element and we're gonna use the before elements. And there's two types of pseudo elements, there's the before and the after, and it doesn't actually matter which one you use, but because, but if by using a before element, um, if you don't apply any other rules, it will appear to the left of your text here. And if you use the after elements, it will appear after your text here. So depending on where you want the icon to be located, you could easily use before or after. And we're gonna write our rule. So to create the before elements, you just set a content. And you have to put this between quotes. You can put anything in here. You can put plain text or you could paste a Unicode character. Uh, but just to see, so you can see how it appears, I'm just gonna put the number 99 and you can see it appears directly before our text. So what you could do, we're not gonna choose this one, but if you want the pointing emojis, we'll just copy that. And we could paste that as our content here. And now we have a nice emoji hand to the left of our subscribe button. And one other good option I like is to use Unicode. So maybe I'll grab a right arrow and let's see what looks good here. Let's go with this one. I'm gonna click to copy. And I'll just paste that in the content here. And now I have this right arrow. Now, one thing that you may notice, depending on the fonts that are on your theme, is not every font, especially some third-party fonts, don't have support for all the emojis. So it's a good idea to use a system font instead, something like Arial, that will have built-in support for most Unicode characters. So I'm just gonna change my font family for the pseudo element to Arial, just to make sure that the uh, Unicode character does show up. And like I said, if you want to put it after the uh, subscribe button, you would just change the pseudo element to an after button. And I'm gonna show you how to put a little bit of spacing between these two as well. Um, so all we have to do is if it's on the right side, you could say uh, margin left. And this is gonna put some margin to the left of the pseudo element and we'll say maybe eight pixels. And now you have some nice spacing between the two. And to level this up even further, we can maybe put an animation on the icon here. So the first thing I wanna do is delete the scale effect. And instead we're gonna animate the icon on hover. And to target this, it's a little bit tricky, but again, we have the same wrapper elements. We've got uh, our menu class, our menu ID, the uh, custom button class that we added. And then we're gonna be targeting the A, the hover state of the A, A elements. And the ordering of these is important. You have to make sure the hover uh, pseudo class is before the after pseudo elements or the pseudo class. So we're targeting the A colon hover colon after. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna move it to the right a little bit um, and animate that. So we're gonna use the transform property. And so we'll say transform colon translate X, oops, translate X, which will move it uh, in the left right direction. And we're gonna move it four pixels to the right. And when I hover, it doesn't do anything. Um, and that's because it's currently an inline element, just like the menu item itself. So we need to change it to display inline block. And I wanna put that rule in the A after selector, not the hover state. So it applies to both states. And now when you hover, you can see it moves. And all we have to do to animate this is put that one simple rule, um, transition all 0.25 seconds. 
And now, a nice smooth animation between both states of the button. Now we've just scratched the surface of what you can do with your buttons in your menu. For example, you could put uh, anchor links and have them jump directly to sections in the page, something I've covered in this video previously, or you could use something like font awesome icons instead of Unicode or emojis to even level up or add more design choices. And you could do that by adding an icon class directly to the button in the menu or by using pseudo elements just as we did in this tutorial as well as my earlier Gutenberg button tutorials. Now, if you haven't already done so, I'd love it if you would subscribe to this channel and join me on this journey where I'm gonna show you how to build better websites and grow your audience for whatever it is that you're putting out into the world. Now, if you're ready to keep learning now, I've got a couple handpicked videos for you right over there. All right, thanks.